you got kids going a bit like one, two, three, six, seven, that kind of thing, or they might be going five, four, three, seven, zero. Uh, it's because rope counting is quite a tricky thing. It takes children a long time to get the hang of. Luckily, you have come to the right place. I'm gonna tell you what rope counting is exactly so you know, and also the nine best games I know for teaching children rope counting. So, here we go. Uh, rope counting, in a nutshell, is basically counting in sequence. It's just going a bit like one, two, three, four, and saying the numbers in order. You're not counting objects, you're not counting actions, you're just saying the numbers in order. There's different ways of rope counting. You can count from one, you can go like, you know, one, two, three, four. You can count backwards as well, it could be something like, 10, 9, 8, 7, that's rope counting as well. You can also start uh, counting at different numbers as well. You could start counting at 6, for example, and go sort of 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, or count backwards. It could be like 16, 15, 14, 13, all that kind of thing. So there's different ways of the rope counting, but definitely to start with, start uh, at 1, basically. You just go you know, 1, 2, 3, get children starting at 1. That's the easiest way to start, and that's what all the games in this video are about. Starting at 1, keeping it easy, and getting them going with road counting. Road counting is super important. Uh, without road counting, it's very hard to kind of progress onto other things in maths. Things like one to one correspondence, you need road counting first. You need to be able to count in order before you can count objects successfully. Also, things like adding and subtraction, it's very hard to attempt any of that kind of thing without being able to uh, at least road count a little bit before you start. So it's crucial, crucial. Right, here we go. Uh, nine top games you can use to, uh, to get children really good at rope counting. Number one is actions, counting actions. I would say this is the number one way of starting them off. Basically, you, uh, you get some kind of action. It could be getting the children stood on their feet and marching like this. And as they're marching, you count at the same time. You go a bit like one, two, three, four, five, a bit like that. Uh, it could be something like clapping, you're like one, two, three. It could be like jumping in the air or hopping and counting at the same time. Just count for as long as you can before they've, they've kind of gone past the limit, they don't really know what they're doing anymore. Then stop, then go back to one and just start again. Like one, two, three, four, that kind of thing. The more multi-sensory you can make it, the more kind of action and movement you can put into it, definitely the way to go and it will stick in their brains much, much better. Number two is using interesting voices. Uh, this is another great one for getting children that are a bit more reluctant and not that interested, getting them on side and getting them interested in counting. Here's one game you can do. I've uh, got this dice. This is a character voices dice. It's got different characters on it. For example, an alien. It's got a ghost. It's got a tiger, a princess. Lots of different characters just like that. Uh, the idea is you roll the dice and then you count in that voice. So, for example, let's try the, uh, the ghost. Uh, all you're going to do is you can get the children to count like a ghost. A bit like... One, two, three, four, five. A bit like that, and they love doing that. It's really, really engaging. Let's try like a little mouse, for example. Like one, two, three, four. Great. All this kind of stuff. Tiger, uh, T Rex, anything you can think of. If they're really interested in something, use that. If they love T Rexes, put a T Rex on the dice. And uh, just the more you can tap into interests, the better. Okay, before I go any further, I should say, please do subscribe to this channel and hit the bell. My name is Martin Williams. I've been a teacher for the last 10 years, teaching children aged three to five. Now I do training courses around the UK. I do training in maths, early phonics, literacy, fine motor, lots of things like that. I do loads of free content on this channel with the early uh, tips and activities for children aged between the ages of about three and seven. So as I say, please subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, number three is uh, counting songs. Songs are one of the most exciting ways of teaching pretty much anything because they're so multi-sensory, they get children moving, uh, actions, music, song, words, all mixed in together, great for learning. There are quite a few songs that count upwards. Uh, for example, the one potato, two potato, the classic song, like one potato, two potato, three, that kind of stuff. Great for rope counting upwards. Another good one is the uh, one, two, three, four, five, one second called Fish Alive. Another classic song, just great for getting them to say numbers in sequence. Okay, number four is using a puppet. Here we go. Puppets are a bit like magic. Uh, here's a monkey puppet. Some children are not massively interested in what adults say, but if you've got a puppet, it can be a totally different story. So, this monkey puppet, for example, um, different ways to do it. Just the easiest way is just you get the monkey to count and the children join in. A bit like one, two, three, four, five. A bit like that. Uh, and he, probably a top tip is get the monkey to whisper. Uh, the idea of this is then the children don't think you're saying the monkey's voice because they sometimes 
That's often what happens in reality. So just get the monkey to say it, and you say it, but like, one, two, three, four. A bit like that. Top tip to try out. Different things you can do. The monkey can go wrong. They love this. They go a bit like, one, two, four. Uh, they love it when it goes wrong. They can coach him how to do it properly, and it's all good for that kind of stuff. The monkey could miss a number out, and they could fill in the gaps. So lots of different opportunities you can do, and just, just a simple, any kind of puppet you've got, a teddy, finger puppet, any of that kind of stuff, will work great for that. Okay, number five. This is dance. This is really exciting, this one. Just put some kind of pumping dance tune on of your choice, any kind of disco track or something. What you do, get the children up on the feet, and you're gonna be doing the, uh, doing the moves and counting at the same time. It could be a simple action, like go one way and then the other, and you go like one, two, three, four. It could be like going up and down. Whatever moves you can think of, just do them to the music. Same as before, when you, I would always go past 10. Uh, don't stop at 10. Lots of children think the numbers stop at 10, which is not good. So go beyond 10 if you can, go 11, 12, 13 at least, then stop, and then go back and do a different action. Um, and just diff different moves, makes it really exciting. They can invent their own dance move as well, take ownership of it, happy days. Uh, number six is counting actions in life. This is probably one of the, the top ways to start them off. This is things like when you're going downstairs, counting the stairs, you know, the classic one, like one, two, three, as you go down with like a baby or a toddler or something, all that kind of thing. Counting food as they eat it, counting jumps, counting blocks as they build with them, all that kind of stuff. There is one-to-one -one correspondence involved in this as well, which is a slightly different skill. You are using actions or objects and things, but it's, it's still all about rote counting. It's counting in a sequence and just getting that in the heads, that which is crucial. Okay, here are a few more. Let's go for number seven. This is circle counting. This is probably not one you can really do with as a parent. I'll tell you the other ideas you can do either as a parent or a teacher. This is more of a teacher on this one. Circle count. You get a circle of children. Basically, the first person is going to say one. Next person says two. Next person says three. And you kind of pass it around the circle like that. You could use some kind of object with this one. You could have like a teddy or something. Give it to the first person, they say one. Pass the next person, they say two three, and just carry on like that. And it's kind of as simple as that. Okay, uh, number eight, this is pair counting. This is a bit like a tennis match. You get a pair of children and they face each other and basically one child says one, the other says two, the other says three, four, and just kind of bounce it back to each other. Uh, this can be done with different voices again. You can roll a dice and they can do like a ghost, for example. Uh, and it's just great practice with a friend counting as high as you can go. Uh, number nine, any any uh, spies or superheroes you can get into the early years, the better. They love anything to do with secrecy and missions, all that kind of thing. So number nine is spy counting. Very simple, this one. You just basically whisper like a top secret spy as you count. You get a bit like one, two, three. Very simple. You can do a bit like one number to one side, but like as well that's a bit of the sort of the, the next step trying it like that but yeah spy counting you cannot go wrong give it a go okay those are the top nine tips i've got for rope counting if you want to find out more i've written a full 17 rope counting ideas on my website so all you need to do is put into google put 17 rope counting activities put that into google it will come up read the article you get the full 17 ideas as I say, please do subscribe to the channel, subscribe and hit the bell.